Hello and welcome to my video tutorial series RPG in a Box. I'm Carsten and in this episode we will complete our house. We will build three floors, including a roof. We will improve our door a lot. There I have something really special for you. Then we will build windows, which are openable and closable too. Then we will build ladders to climb up on the roof. And the last thing I have is a nice graphical special effect which will round up the ambience of our house extremely. So let's start. So what has changed since the last episode? You see it at the right side. I made a lot more models. So I built a block of straw for the roof parts. Additional, a chimney like a tube. I separated the bricks with, the, with coloring the joints between the bricks. I built a ladder to climb up the roof. I built a railing for the new stairs. Additional, the roof parts, an outer corner, inner corner, and the straight part. I improved the texture of our sand tile, and I built a very nice wooden pocket. So we can build our house from this part. Additional, I made a preview camera setting to make thumbnails for every model, so we have a better impression how it looks in the engine. So I promised you a special for our doors. Previously, I had the idea to build up a door from two parts. A frame, which is a tile, and an attached object. There is a thing called um, attach points, we will discuss later on. And to attach the door frame and animate the angular rotation of it. So the result was a tile, which I cannot interact in any way. So it's absolutely useless, and I throw this idea away. Then I got a hint from the community about a video of Keith Anders. He's also making tutorial videos about scripting mostly, and he's also active as a later sill at Discord, and he's helping 24-7, I guess. A uh, pretty nice guy. And that brings me back to the idea to shape it. And the result is pretty awesome. It's an animation technique, super, super simple, super fast, and visually perfect. So let's start with this. So let's go to the object panel and open the door. If you remember, of course you remember, we built the animation with a lot of pain. It was really time consuming and we will change it yet. So first let's make a copy of that. We call it door of wood and it will be the frame. So that's it. Then let's change these. So we delete all animations except the first one. And then we will erase the door panel out of the frame because we don't need it anymore. Like this. Then we need some point to attach our panel. So let's set a custom color and we will use 594D4D. Okay. And then we will paint the fort from the bottom and these two pixels as our, I think, hinge is the, the English word for it. And now comes the trick. So, to attach a thing, an object, to our object, we need something called attach point. So, let's create an attach point at the bottom and call it a hinge. So, that's it. And now we build our panel. So, let's open the door again and make a new copy and call it door, door of wood. And that is the panel. So, then we also delete all animations except the first one. And let's delete the whole frame. Like this. And then we will also attach a hinge at our wood locks at this position 
and this position. Then we will reduce our model grid size by selecting all, looking from the top, and then we will move the frame, uh, the panel in the middle of our model, and we will reduce the width to six voxel. Oh no, it's the height. We will reduce the, uh, the depth to six voxels like this, because we don't need any other things. And we will also attach our joint as hinge. To attach the two objects together, we first have to save and then we, we select the frame. So additionally, we will look from the front and now we can attach objects to it. So use this button at the top and let's select the frame hinge to add the object door wood panel. And we also use the attach point hinge and we've automatically attach this object in game. These objects will attach by default if you add the frame to your map. So let's check this out. Now you see the result. Our panel is attached to the frame, but it's not perfect shaped. So you see it's a lot bigger than the frame and we can change it in the model properties. So if you scroll down, you find our attach point hinge and we can change the settings. So first we can use the scale factor and set that to one. So if you change these settings, it will stretch or pushed together. So we set them to one in the X, Y and Z axis. So now our door is perfectly attached to the frame. And then we have these settings where we can set the offset in X, Y, Z. So we can position the hinge inside our frame. So we don't want to do this, but it's possible. So what we want to do is change the rotation. So if we rotate in the X axis, then the door is falling out of the frame and we don't want to do that. And the Y axis, our door is flipping to the side. The interesting thing is the Z axis. So the door is visually opened and closed in the frame. So we can use this to build our animations. So the first animation frame is this. And then we simply made copies from our animation or from our frame and change the rotation of the set axis by 15%. And simply that's it. So we get a visual perfect animated door without flickering voxels and without hours of animating and moving voxels in the frame. So let's check this. We add the animation type open from frame one to seven with clamp and we override our preset from the last episode. And additional, the close animation from seven to one, also clamp. Okay, and now we can check this out by first saving door, then use the preview. And that's the open animation and that's the close animation. And I see my uh, hinge is mispositioned, so I will fix that now. I think the problem should be... What's the problem? No, there is no problem at all. I don't get it. Let's check it out. So let's switch to the map and open the start area. And we will see we left it in a creepy state where we put sand on the roof. So let's strip that from the roof, or from our house. We will delete this. And then we also delete our door 
and we want to use our new door and position it in the frame. And then we have to correct the navigation paths inside the house like this. And now we can check it out in the game. We see there is no panel and that is a bug. Previously, I have seen there can be a panel attached to the door, but it's not every time visible to the map. I don't know why. So let's save and go to the map. So now we see our door and we see we can open and close it and it looks pretty perfect. We have no misaligned voxels and have to animate them in hours and the door opens and closes smoothly, but not your version of the game and why it isn't. That will I explain next. So to open a door in the game, we have to predefine this as a door by selecting the two tiles and the door and marked it as a door. What did I? I attached my own script to the door. So instead of adding the tiles in the map editor, I added my script, Sanchez Magic Door. Link is in the description. So what does it? In the Pratrian Asset game, there's a pretty nice example for a script for a door, but you have to define the player, the, uh, the, the door itself, and you have to select three coordinates and to, to set up that for each single door in the map editor, and that's too much. So my script handles this aut automatically. So the door, uh, the, the tiles in front of the door and beyond the door will be marked as a walk in interaction while opening the door. And if you close the door, it's blocked. So it's not just an interaction line. And additionally, the field beyond the panel is blocked or freed if you close the door. So simple, download it and add it to your models and you don't have to do anything at all. So feel free to use the script to improve the script, to distribute the script, have fun with it. If you find a bug, um, send me a message. I will fix it soon. I have fun with this stuff. So let's go on. The next is the window. I also made a window like the door before. We have a left and a right attachment point, And I also created two panels, a left and a right one attached to the window. Additionally, we have the animations to open and close the window like this. So we can add this to the house too. So let's go to the map editor. So previously, we have to tear down the wall. So let's pick some wall tiles and delete them to add the new window parts. So then we need a new ledge for our window. I hope it's the correct spelling or word. So we have to raise the set level by one, two, and then we add our ledges into the house. And additional, by raising the layer, the set layer by 16 with control mouse wheel, we can add the lintel. I, yes, lintel. So, and then we can add the windows to our house and it will attach on top of the of the of the of the what of the ledge so and then we have a window and to interact with the window we need an interaction line like this and you have to watch out that the yellow line goes over the wall because there's other possibility where it goes up goes under the wall. So you interact with the tile, the grass tile, and not with the window. Oh, additional, we can add the nice looking parquet to our house now, like this. Oh, it looks pretty good. Okay, so, but if we try it out in the game, we cannot open our window. So, and if we want to try to interact with the window, nothing happens. 
So we have an interaction line, but we cannot interact with the window object itself because we don't have a script, so change that yet. We are gonna go to write your first script. No, it's not the first script, you already made the startup script. So let's open a new resource of type script and call it open window. So, and this will do the magic for us. So click the display message and delete them with the delete key. And then we want to evaluate a condition. So drag it to your workspace. And then we want to ev evaluate an, a value from our object. So we attached an object to our window. There it is. Maybe you have to do it yet. Um, which is called state and that handles the state of the window. So now it's closed because this animation is a default animation of our model and it is closed by default. The other uh, way where would be, we take this as first animation and then it would be open. So we want to handle this state to decide what should happen at next. So let's press the wizard button. And then we want to evaluate the self. Self is the object interacted as with which we interact. So, and we want to evaluate a property from self. So, and we want to check, is it equals to a string? So, and the string value is closed. And the property name is state. And then let's press the OK button. And then we will trigger some actions. So let's add a new function and search for animation because we want to start animation. So if the state is closed, we want to play the animation with the name, with the name open. And that should happen if this is true. So, and otherwise, we want to play also an animation, but the animation close. So that's it. So we read it like, give me a second. So we read it like start script. If self has a property state with, with value closed, equals closed, then play the animation at the window with is named open. Otherwise, play the animation closed. So, and then we can open our window, let's say, um, and the window would open and open and open and open again on ad opening for all the time in the world because the state doesn't change. So we will do this yet. After handling the state closed and opening the window, we have to reassign this value. So let's do this. We want to assign a value. And now we can open this again and copy that to use it here. So that's an, that, this, that is a variable starting with a dollar sign. We can use keywords. Self is a keyword, and that is programming language. I will explain it in a later episode, but not yet. Not 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 yet. Okay. So, um, and we want to assign the value. Uh, as we can change the assigning operator. So that is assigning a value to it, with which is a string, and which should be open. You can also type it here, but you have to use the double quotes in at the start and the end of the word. So use this instead. And otherwise, if the state is not closed, we assume that is, it is open. So then we close the window and assign the new value closed. It's easy, right? Isn't it? closed. So now save this. And then we have to assign our new script to our window. So go to the window and the model properties, scroll down 
and assign the script open window. So that's it. Let's save and go to the map again. Uh, go to the game again. So let's start the game and now we can interact with our window. No, we can't. And I know the reason why. We have assigned the script to the object, but every object in the world will not be changed. So if you change the name of the script, the script will change also because the name is a reference to the script. And if you change the script, it will handle at runtime of the game. But if you add an object to the map, the name of the script is added to this window as copy in the model and in the uh, entity properties. So the problem is this window is set before the script exists. So there isn't a script at all. So we have to delete them or we have to add the script manually. So let me show you if we delete this and use a new window, the script is added automatically. So like this. Okay, and that should do the trick. So let's go to the game again. And now we can interact with our window. That's pretty nice, isn't it? But if you see, we cannot interact with the panels itself. And that's why you cannot interact with an object attached to another object. So you can interact with the frame, but never with the panel itself, like the door before. And that is not cool. So let's change this yet. So we have to use a little workaround or a so-called hack. So we need a surface to interact with the door frame at this position because there is our frame and we cannot interact with it. So we use a new color and add a thin surface at the front and the back side of the door like this. And because it isn't really beautiful, more ugly. So we want to change this too. So we add this color as transparency color with full transparency. So we wouldn't recognize this in the game. So if you would use a bright color, you have a shining effect or something like a ghost. So we use a dark color. So um, it's more like a, a shadow and nearly invisible. So let's check it. So as you can see, there is nothing or nearly nothing so additional we have to recognize our last frame so the closed door is pretty good but if we open the door the interaction shape is missing so we have to add this too and additionally we can fill the whole frame so additional, we can wrap the door in an interaction body. So like this. So you can interact with the door panel in the open state too. So let's check this out. And there is nearly nothing. So, additional, we have to add this shape to the window, but just at this side of the window because the back side has the window panels with the glass shapes, which is part of the frame. So, and we have to add the transparency color too with full transparency, so we made it. And now let's go back to the game and check it out. Hmm. Come on. Hmm. 
So, quick play. And now we can interact with the door and open and close state and with the panel too. So, it's pretty nice. And that is our so-called hack. And if you look, you see a, a thin shadow, but nearly invisible for the user. So you only see it if you know it. So, and the window is the same. And if you have problems to click the window, there is a hind for you. So let's go to the map editor. If you cannot interact with any object, in 99% of the cases, that the reason is your interaction line, your navigation paths. So in theory, we have navigation lines on our floor, but there are two layers of navigation lines which are invisible. So we have the wooden parquet at layer zero and above we have the, the stone ledge and the window is attached at the stone and not on the wooden floor. So the navigation line has to be on the on the bottom of layer zero. So if we check this, we can use a navigation line and hover over the cube and you see there is a great out cube at layer zero. Here's the coordinate. At layer zero, it's grayed out. And at layer one, that is a bright white cube. So this navigation line is attached at layer one where the stone wall is and not the floor. We can test it by erasing the floor. And if you cannot interact with your window, then your navigation line is attached to the wooden pocket. So if you erase this and your navigation line stays in your map, that is the error case. So let's go back. That's about navigation lines. So with this technique, you can fix all the problems. So building houses with several floors are senseless without a possibility to reach the upper floors. So we will change it. I previously made stairs. So here are the stairs and we can add it to our map at layer one. Previously, we should remove the navigation paths or lines because it's easier at this point. So let's add it and press control mouse wheel up to rise it by 16, which is a block high. And we have the stairs ready. So as you see, it's not as beautiful as it could be because of the middle railing. So in a normal way, we would create several types of stairs with buff railings, left railing, right railing, maybe other shapes or um, color tones or something. And we would create millions of stairs. <clears throat> so to avoid it, we can simply use the animations. So as you see, I have one animation with buff railings, one with a left railing and one with a right railing because we don't use this in scripts and with the default names, which are handled by the engine itself, we can use them freely and can set can preset them here. So the first frame is the standard case if we put them in the map. And inside the map editor, we can change this freely by selecting the stairs and change the default, uh, the initial frame to two at this side and three at this side. So, and that's it. So we avoid building hundreds of thousands or millions blocks. Now let's come to the next floor. We can simply add a new line on top of our house and be sure to add the auto connection mode, which avoids wasting a lot of time by set the navigation paths manually. So we can put them on our walls and we have to simply add the navigation lines from the entry floor to the upper floor like this. And you see the navigation lines are on top of the highest voxel automatically. So then we will add our building parts. To do this, we use shortcuts. So pressing the, uh, use the replacing mode and press the Alt key to select the building parts from the layer under the floor, so like this and this, 
and this too and zoom out and control mouse wheel up and set the next one like this and this and this and this and then the inner corner like this uh, and we have to undo it and we move the auto connection as well so that's it and then we simply add the walls And I don't want to add windows at this layer. Because it's time consuming and um, it's not necessary for the showcase. So we built the second floor. Ah, we missed one detail. So as you can see, we have the floor and we have an edge where you can fall down. So we want to add a railing too. So I pre-made also this railing so we can attach them. And then we will build up the next layer. Yes, it's the right position. It was just a check. So we have the next layer ready. And now we add a new floor for the roof tiles. So like this and check this again. Yeah, it's pretty good. And use the auto connection mode to do it faster. Like this, and we want to add the railings too. And disable the auto settings to avoid creating navigation paths, which oh, one line above, with, to create navigation paths so that they don't be attached to each other. Otherwise, you can see scenes where your character is moving um, hidden paths and around corners like this to reach a field here because there are uh, multiple navigation paths uh, attached on each other and you cannot see it. So, okay. At last, we want to add the roof. So we use this beautiful roof parts and add it to this floor to build the roof on top of the house, like this. And then we add multiple layers of it, but previously we erase this navigation lines because it would really it look would look really unnatural if our character is walking as close under the roof. So that's pretty good. And then let's close the roof. So learning shortcuts helps a lot to speed up the creation part. So we made it. And last but not least, we add this. No, that's not as good. Let's use this instead. So, ready. Let's save the map. And I want to show you one more thing. As you can see at the right, there are more and more objects and tiles, and it's going to be unorganized. So to work against it, we can organize them simply by um, using a good name scheme. So you can uh, simply add a block to the filter. Uh, otherwise, if you say it's my fancy block or something else, and you have not uh, you have the material not included or the type not included or something else, you can use tags. So we can simply go to the um, object editor in the model properties and we can add tags to any object or tile or something else. So that's uh, block and stone, block and stone because it's a block of stone. And whoops, I have to save it. I'm sorry. Block and stone. And we can 
add this and we can also set this a uh, block of wood block and wood and we need some other wood parts too like let's say a leather leather and wood and one more so let's use the rain raining ah not yet um let's say the railing wood and that's it so we have to save each of them to have it in the properties else this is left so and now we can use the filter list to see our tags so and we can say if we want to build something from wood we can use the tag wood and we have all wood parts in the right panel so that's really good so and we made the house from our parts and every single part is made from a block of noise generated um, material so that's a pretty good system i think if you have a better solution i'm very interested in so write it down to the comments i'm every time searching for better solutions and to improve my techniques as well so at the weekend i was really hyped i got the really first comments at my tutorial series and that was pretty awesome because i started the channel in 2017 with an excavator app for my son and it wasn't successful at all so i'm so hyped that this tutorial is you that you like my tutorial and it's pretty funny for me to make this and i want to go on and make a full series of tutorials for every single part of rpg in the box because rpg is pretty awesome so that's all about it. let's go on so my friends the next step is creating the hiding of our la layers and that's the most error thrown part so it is really hard to do it well at first try so let's start and hopefully we success with the first try so we succeed with the first try. um let's start by selecting the tiles in the box mode so the first we want to do is hiding the upper part of our roof while we are directly at the third floor so <clears throat> we want to call the roof floor the le level three and so we add these tiles to level three minus height so that they are automatically disabled or uh, hidden while we are on level three tiles so then we can choose the map properties to hide these tiles and then we have to define our level three so use the select tool and press anywhere in the map to unselect all previously selected tiles so then we choose all tiles for level three including the upper part of the stairs so and we want to add these tiles to oh one more thing let's add the railing itself too because our navigation lines could be connected to this set layer as well as i said before so let's add them to to level three so and then save often and regularly that we don't do that twice or 100 times so let's save okay the next step is to hide all above layer two. So we choose level three height and show them in the map. So please don't save unless everything is perfect. If you do mistakes, do not save the map, quit and do this step again. So the key to success is saving at each successful step so we want to remove the upper floor including the wooden floor tiles so i select the wooden part and not just the roof so and then we can use this or we can also look inside of the house but we 
I think we selected all. And there's another way to uh, fix little bugs. I will show you. So add this to level two minus height. So, and now let's check the success. That's the wrong layer. Level to height. There is this. This is an. This is erroneous. We have to correct them. So level two height is this, and that looks pretty good. So we have to change this one. So let's let's show all <clears throat> tiles of the map and deselect everything, and then we choose level three and select all tiles and add these tiles to the correct spelling group, level three without minus. And now we want to delete this one. So that looks pretty good. So let's hide level two height, that's okay. And now we define level two. So the best way to do this is also including the wooden part as well as the first wall tiles because of the set layer problem. So, and the first part, the lower part of our stairs too. So add this to group level two, of course, without minus. And then we check the result again. No, we don't have to check the results again. We deselect all and then we show all tiles of our map. That isn't that good. So, I also had a case that I lose some parts of my house while doing this. So be careful. And we have to hide level three to hide. Okay, and show it. Okay, looks pretty good. And now we want to define level one height. So maybe I have to do a bug report for losing parts of my map. And this happened while preparing episode 11, which is coming in the new year. And I think it's about uh, lighting shadows fog and something like this. So actually I'm doing the script and do the translating stuff of the stand episode here for the English users. So let's define this as group level one minus height. Okay. And let's check this. That was the wrong layer. Level one height. Looks pretty good. So don't forget to save. And I will save too. So now we have to define level one. We have misaligned navigation paths, but it isn't a problem now. So we we should do that, but we don't have to. It's not necessary. So let's select these tiles as level one. And so we should do this stuff. So let's check something. Okay. If we select single tiles, we see the groups here. And there we can check which tile is in which groups. And I want these tiles as well in level two. And I can adjust single tiles by grouping them with the group manager to set them to level two. I also can use shift to um, 
select multiple in a row or a control to select multiple not attached to each other. So we want to add this to level two, but we cannot manage multiple selected tiles. I cannot do this. You see? Okay. So that's it. So the last thing we should do is showing all the tiles and looking at the inside of the house. And we have all parts aligned correctly, but we have a set layer error in our roof. But we will we don't will correct this now. So let's save this and we will check it out in the in the game. So this is the moment we use quick play and try to hide our floors. We go out of the house and we see the hiding is good, but we cannot zoom out quite enough. So let's arrange this new in the general setting standard perspective. We have to hire the maximum zoom like this and then we can try it out again back to the game yep much better so we see the whole house and if we go upstairs we see just the second floor it's correct and if we go under the roof we should yes and we made it pretty nice okay that's about hiding and you have to be really, really precise. It's really, 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 really error thrown. So s try it floor by floor and save at every successful step. So let's come to the next part and this is climbing. So we have a wooden ladder and we want to climb up to the roof to uh, see how climbing works we can use the help section and can enter climb so you can see the concept of climbing that is the uh, the preparation of such an episode so you can uh, just for you that you know where my sources are from so and i also use the online documentation but i can imagine that if i look at tutorial i don't want to read documentation so everything is fine so let's start with our letters in the map editor so let's go to the map editor and then select a letter and we want to build a letter to climb up the roof to the roof so we stay the letter at this point and then help correctly is the the correct layer is the first set layer and then we raise it block by block to climb up the roof. So, and that is the ladder. I also cut them from a, the wooden block. So, and now we have to configure it. So, that is also an error thrown part. So, save add success. First, we have to add the property climbable to the ladder. So, now it is climbable. And we have to do this for each part of the ladder which we want to use to climb up the roof. You can also do it at any other kind of tile. So it's not just because it's a ladder. So now we are searching for the navigation part because we have to use this layer. This is the zero layer and not the one. So we have to align or the, we have to connect the grass tile and not the wall tile to this. Otherwise we get an error or an erroneous results. So now we can use navigate and interact and say climb. So this is the start of a ladder and then we climb step by step up the ladder. So and do this step by step. If you have problems, if everything goes, anything goes wrong, don't save it. Close the map and do it again from start on. So that worked pretty good. And we have to use a navigation node. So let's save this first. And then we want to go along our roof. So we can 
add the navigation paths to our roof too. And we can then go along the edge of our roof. We can also add other ways like this, but I don't want to stretch this episode that much. Okay, so let's test it. Quick play, start a game, and then we want to. Oh, do we have a navigation line? No, we have it. So we have to fix this. Uh, that's the problem, and we should connect this path to. And now, let's check it out in the game. So we are on the way up to the roof. And now click on the ladder and your character has a bug. Maybe I should do a bug report. So let's try it again with another camera perspective. So let's use this with non-experimental features. Maybe this is the cause, I don't know. I had it a few times, but it's not systematically there or not there. So we try it again. And we want to climb up the ladder and it works pretty well. And as you can see, Rex hasn't climbed animation. That's the next part. So between the episodes, I added new animations for Rex. Exactly what kind of animation? I added an interact animation where Rex uses the hand to interact with the door or the window or something else. And I added a climb animation, which simply is an climb animation. And as you can see, Rex flips from the right to the left. So, and why this happens, I cannot explain. I notice it every time I climb up a ladder. I don't know if I made a mistake or it's a bug in the game. I don't know at this position. If I find a solution, I will report it in the next episodes. So that's it for the animation stuff. And as I said, I have a special effect for you. So I made a chimney to put it on top of the roof. And I also have an animation type with a cut edge to place it on the diagonal of our roof. So we want to place it there. So let's take the chimney and put it up to the roof. Where's the chimney? Let's correct the camera position. So like this, and we want to set it on top of the roof like this. Yeah, that, that's pretty good. So we have to adjust it perfect. So like this. Okay, and that's it. Now let's check if the roof at the chimney is, yeah, it is. So we have to take the second frame, okay, and we can save it. And now I want to create a smoke animation. So let's go to the effect editor and add a new effect so we can use a preset flame and we call it smoke. So that's the flame. And from this, we want to create our smoke animation. So this is the setup for the effect properties. We can use this by emitting particles, yes or no. Uh, one shot is a single type and we can use the speed scale, which we want to set to 0 0.2. And the particle amount is pretty good. And the lifetime of our smoke animation should be a little bit higher. So like this. And the emission shape is box and then we can adjust the box size to make it wider, higher, deeper, something else. And the particle shape actually is cube, but we can also use sphere or billboard or something else. And the cube size, and we want to 
set the color to a very dark gray, like uh, 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, 3. And we want end, not in the reds. Instead, a D2, D2, D2 this is bright gray. It's like this. You know, that pre looks pretty good. And then we want to use an end scale a little bit smaller, like this. And also, we can adjust the direction. That is the initial speed direction set to one, so upwards. And we can add a gravity to the x axis. So our smoke is turning to the side. And we can use the spread, that is um, how it spreads on the flatness. Uh, maybe I make an episode about FX editor later on. So the initial velocity and the randomness, uh, it's like the name says, um, initial speed and uh, how it uh, is differentiated between the, the cubes. And acceleration, radial acceleration, which is uh, turning around and we can turn on rotating to the set axis and uh, triangle acceleration, I don't know yet. So let's use the smoke and save it. And now we can attach the smoke to our chimney by adding a last attach point at the inside of our chimney. So let's call it smoke. And we want to adjust it a little bit in the middle of the chimney. So we try this, not, not rotating. No. Scale one, but it isn't important. No, it isn't important. We want to use the offsets to set it in the middle of the chimney, like this. And now we can attach the effects at the smoke point. We want to attach an effect called smoke automatically add, adding to the map and that's pretty good and now we see we have a smoking chimney so let's make the set offset a little bit higher oh that looks pretty good and now we can check it in the map editor as well because in the map editor we see a preview about the smoke but we have to close it and open it again and then we see the preview of the smoke one last thing we discussed about viewports and there is another setting i haven't shown yet that is the standard view with orthogonal camera so all axes are aligned so we haven't a perspective at all so we can bring up in visual detail like a flat shape like uh, old games secret of mana uh, mystic quest and so on oh we we missed to hide our chimney too so you can make an look and feel of old rpgs with uh, while making three-dimensional voxel models which makes your life easier so and that's it for this episode and as usually if you enjoyed it so far, give me thumbs up, stay tuned, and I would be very excited about your subscription. See you in the next episodes. Bye!